no, but I'm really excited for you to be here. I'm super <laughs> excited. We're talking about friendships today. And um, you and I, when we first met properly, we basically were talking about university. Yeah, we were talking about universities and whether it was a good or bad thing exactly. to go and yeah, exactly. a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, well, it was a really good conversation. That was a good conversation. <laughs> yeah, so was... obviously we're going to touch on a little bit here talking about friendships, but that was a really, really cool conversation. Yeah, no, it was. It was, it was really cool. Yeah. But before we get into that, I've been doing this with all my guests now going forward. So we're going to play a little game of this or that. So okay. we can see where your mind's at, what you would pick, and kind of where you're at. All right, no worries. Let's right. go. First one. So obviously you're talking about friendships. So if you go back in time, would you rather go back to GCSEs or A-levels? <laughs> A-levels. A-levels. Why A-levels? could have done a lot better. <laughs> you could have done a lot better. Fair enough. That's a fair <laughs> point. Okay, fine. Moving on. Would you rather pick the nine to five life or the entrepreneur life? You know what people say, yeah? Someone told me once that with the entrepreneurial life, yeah. your ceiling is a lot higher. But yeah. Your floor is also a lot lower. Mm. Nine to five, obviously you've got <laughs> yeah. a lower ceiling, but you've got a higher floor. So nine to five. Nine to five. Okay. <laughs> yes. Just for, that makes sense. Safety. Safety. Right. Next one. Would you rather pick a healthy bank account? So you've got loads of zeros in that bank account or a healthy investment portfolio? Healthy investment portfolio. Okay, why? <laughs> because in the long term, the healthy investment portfolio is going to make you a lot more money, you know. And if it's that uh, is true, if it's profit generating, like you know, it pays dividends, then yeah, like you're laughing. Makes sense. Yeah. Right, next one. Would you rather pick an expensive house or an expensive car? Expensive house. You don't want to be whipping around in like a what's an expensive car? Look at me, a Porsche or something like that. No. <laughs> Listen, London has one of the best transport systems in the world. For true. A reason. True. Got to utilize it, man. Um, <laughs> A house is a, obviously appreciating appreciating asset. Yeah. And you can do more stuff with a house. Like, yeah, you know I mean that is true. if I wanna if I wanna do the whole keeping up with the Johnsons, I'll invite people around to my house. Be like, true. Nice that is very true. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, makes house. sense. Okay, final question. I'll ask this to every guest. Would you rather pick five hundred thousand pounds or dinner with Jay Z? <laughs> five hundred thousand pounds. Why not Jay Z? What am I gonna talk about with Jay Z? <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you can unlock some tips and you know, just change your life. I think if I was like in the music industry or a rapper, yeah, then definitely. But to be fair, mm, you know, Jay-Z is multifaceted. He's in yeah, a lot of different industries. Exactly. But how, well, how much was it? 500,000? 500,000, 500, so half a mil. Oh, I'll, I'll take thinking. half a mil, man. Half a mil? Yeah, I'll take half a mil. Still, still no Jay-Z? No, no, no. Sorry, Jay-Z, you got to park it. We're not, <laughs> no mils today. You, you're yeah, the second yeah, person to say no. It's all right. right. Yeah. It's all right. But now we're going to get straight into apprenticeship. So I'm really excited to talk to you today. But tell us a little bit about your background. So like, you know, A-levels, all of that stuff. Talk to us. Yeah, so um, I did GCSEs, went to sixth form, like the majority of people um, got, you know, fairly good A-levels. Then I went to university to study computer science. Um, I've always been into that kind of stuff, like mm -hmm. programming and stuff. I did it for A-level and GCSE. So I went to university to study computer science, um, graduated uh, this Jan, not January, June, this yes. June. And, um, Amazing, congratulations. I immediately started working for an investment bank. Uh, so I'm a software engineer at a bank. Oh, so, really cool, really yeah, cool. We're going to yeah. get into that in a minute. But, so you went on the university route, so did I, yeah. right? And um, <laughs> I mean, like, lots of people have their own feelings towards university, but what, what would you say? Because obviously, as I grew up, I, there wasn't really much chatter about apprenticeships. It was always like, you get to, you know, A-levels and do your A-levels, do really well so you can go to Ruskin University, so you can go to this great university. What's your thoughts on university? I think universities are just forced down people's throats. Um, in hindsight, I think I should have maybe considered doing an apprenticeship mm -hmm. um, of some sort, um, especially after A-levels, but I just didn't consider it. It was just going to university um, for me. Um, obviously, like one thing that people need to think about is, uh, you know, student loan. Student yes, finance that's stuff. a big one. And obviously, like, you know, I'm sure you've dispelled the myths about student finance. Yeah. You know, the fact that you only pay once you start earning a certain amount. Exactly. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But I think what's really scary is that the government could change the rules about your repayments at any time. Yeah. You know, and you owe that money, and it, the interest rates are quite high on, on on student loans. And you know, tomorrow they could say, oh, instead of it being I think twenty seven k, it should be twenty three k. Yeah. You know, you start paying your nine percent back, so it can change. Um, I think that can be scary. So that's the one drawback. Um, and I think as well, what's crazy is that the majority of things I learn on my course, I'm not actually using day-to-day -day in yeah. my role. Yeah. And I think that happens a lot with especially a lot of um, a lot of subjects where you go to university, you study, I don't know, engineering, and then you're working in something completely different. Yeah. Um, 
Like, I think <laughs> this country is one of the only countries where you could go to university and study, like, I don't know, classics and end up working at a bank. Like, absolutely. <laughs> like, no one uses their degree. So, I think, you know, when you take that into consideration, is going to university worth it? Maybe not. Maybe you should look at other apprenticeships. There are some really, really good apprenticeships. And I'm sure we'll talk about degree apprenticeships as well, which is yeah. like the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah. Let's touch on that now. Talk, talk to us about what that is. Uh, the a degree apprenticeship. Who, yeah, so whatever. I've actually met a lot of degree apprentices on at, at work. And I was like, wow, like, you guys are being paid to learn and earn. So literally, um, it's an apprenticeship, but you get a degree at the end of it. So they, I think they do two days of like in the classroom like actually like you know learning and do three days in the office and then as they progress it sort of goes more in they do more in the office and it's four years instead of three years but they get a degree at the end of it um from a university so you know that's fantastic right you're not getting any tuition fees um you're earning money and you've basically got a job at the end of it because they will hire you mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah like it's it's the best of both worlds um, and yeah, like, I'll definitely recommend people to look into degree apprenticeships if you're unsure about university but still want a degree. Yeah. Um, because I think it is definitely, you know, a hidden gem. Yeah, no, I agree with you. So I, I want to kind of, from, from the best of your knowledge, how hard do you think it is to get into apprenticeships? Because like when you take the uni route, right? So, we, you know, you do A-levels, regardless of, pretty much regardless of what you get, you can go to a university. Yeah. It might not be Russell Group, it might not be one of the best, but you can go to yeah, university. Can, yeah. Whereas apprenticeships... Is it that easy? Because I, I guess, you know, if someone is at A-level point and you're not sure what you want to do, it's kind of just an easy thing to just be like, oh, I'll just go to any uni. Someone's mm. going to take me. I'll get student loan. I'll just kind of study something and I'll figure it out. It kind of like delays you three years mm. to figure out your path. For the yeah. apprenticeships, you almost have to know where you need to go, um, what kind of industry you want to be in already at mm. 18. I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I know for me, I, I had three personal statements. <laughs> yeah, I had three. One, the first one was for dentistry. Oh, wow. I was going to go into dentistry. Second one just for bi biology in general. And then my final one, I did French. And that's what I actually oh, went to go and do. Exactly. So enough. at 18, I had no idea. <laughs> that's, that just shows you. So like how easy or hard do you think it is to get into yeah, like, I think I think it can be difficult if, you know, there isn't that support at schools. Mm -hmm. um, like there's tons of support for university help. You know, they'll read your personal statements. Um, they'll help you try to like at least get into university whereas most schools don't have the same services for apprenticeships yeah and i think that's probably what makes it a lot difficult i would also say as well if you go for an apprenticeship like uh, there's no shame in not going to university at 18. like you can go when you're 20 19 you could go do an apprenticeship realize it's not for you drop out you haven't lost anything exactly it's not yeah, like you've taken true. out a load of money like you're literally earning money so like you can go when you're 19 or 20 if it wasn't for you um so yeah i don't think there's any sort of shame and going to university later or even doing that for a while while you're trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. But you, you think like the application process to actually get an apprenticeship isn't that hard? Because um, imagine, because I know my sixth one didn't really offer help mm, to apply for apprenticeships. Someone, yeah. someone wants to go off their own back. Is it almost like, is yeah. it a guarantee? Not, not yeah, guarantee, it's, but... It's not a guarantee. It can be difficult, especially yeah. if you want to get a really, really good one. I think back when we were in school, they were probably a lot less competitive, especially the degree apprenticeship ones. But now, because more people know about them, yeah. they're probably a bit more competitive. And what you will find is that, you know, schools that have a lot more money and resources, like private schools or even like um, certain um, schools in affluent areas, they might actually be able to provide those services, right? Like CV, writing skills and like interview skills. Because I think the process to actually get an apprenticeship is more like a job application where they interview you. I don't think it's about your technicals. I don't think they're really too fussed about how much you know, but they just want to get to know you more. And I think if you're coming from like an underprivileged background, that can be quite difficult because you may not know how to navigate like that interview environment. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, yeah, like the one thing I think definitely needs to improve is just more resources to help people actually pass that rigorous process. Yeah, agreed. Completely agree with you. That makes a lot of sense. I want to ask you this question. You kind of touched on it at the beginning, but if you had your time again, would you go down the same route or would you do something different? Ooh. Knowing everything that you know now, with regards to apprenticeships, obviously your, your journey at university, would you do the exact same thing again? I want to say no, but at the same time, like if I could have gotten a degree apprenticeship at sixth form, I probably would have taken it. But like, I'm one of those people that doesn't like saying, oh, if I was to go back, I would do this. Because yeah. like, you know, I am where I am now and I'm quite happy with where I am. So, you know, I could have done the degree apprenticeship and, and been miserable. So True. That is very true. Um, but yeah, no, I think a degree apprenticeship is, is, is brilliant. Like, I definitely would have considered doing it. Um, 
especially given the fact, like I said, the majority of stuff I learned in my course just yeah. went over my head. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And finally, what tips would you give to someone looking to actually get into an apprenticeship? Knowing what you know, like their places, the things that people should look to do. Yeah, those kind of things. Even like work experience at Sixth Form, is that, yeah. that going to help people? Yeah, um, yeah, work experience at Sixth Form, if you do get it, it I think it will be brilliant on your CV. Um, I think, you know, if your school is very under-resourced in terms of apprenticeships, Google has to become your best friend. Um, you've got to find your own resources online. Um, try to find YouTube videos of people who have gone down that route. Um, try to ask whatever you're applying to for support as well, because they might offer support knowing mm -hmm. that people from underprivileged backgrounds don't have as much access to opportunities. So, um, yeah, try to find resources online. Um, and yeah, I think two most important things when you're applying for an apprenticeship is your CV and your, you know, your ability to convey or communicate um, to the interviewer. Um, but yeah, I don't think people should be scared of applying to apprenticeships. I think people should go into it, you know, knowing that they can get it um, if, you know, they're willing to put in the work and the groundwork. And, and you can apply for both at the same time. You can apply That's for true. uni That's and That's a good also, point. You can apply for yeah, both. Yeah. And then, then from for, there, you're probably in the best position because you can pick yeah, what you want to do. Exactly, exactly. So um, I would say, yeah, you can apply for both. So why not do that? So smart. Thank you so much, Toby. <laughs> but we are not done yet. The episode's not done. I hope okay. you know. Yeah. So now we're moving on to the section that I like to call That's Really Happened. And this is the section of the podcast where we kind of talk about something that's changed or happened in the last week. And we kind of discuss, get your thoughts on it, see what you think. As I'm sure you, you, you probably can kind of guess what I'm going to talk about because it's been everywhere. And if you haven't seen it, then I can only conclude that you don't have a smartphone or you're just not connected to online. So what we're going to talk about right now is Facebook. I knew you were going to say See, it. exactly. You knew where I was going to go. Facebook. So Facebook yeah. has obviously rebranded to mm -hmm. Meta. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what's happened. Yeah. Um, and this move came about because there was a series of negative stories online about Facebook mm. and it was all based on documents leaked by an ex-employee. Mm. So Mark Zuckerberg decided to announce this brand new name and he unveiled that he's planning to build a metaverse, which is basically an online world where people can game, work and communicate in a virtual environment, often using VR headsets. What are your thoughts, Toby? I mean, it sounds very uh, Black Mirror. Yeah, it, yeah. Oh, Black Mirror if you haven't seen Black Mirror, oh my gosh, <laughs> that thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, I think... Um, a lot of companies do this when they get quite large, like Google did the same thing with Alphabet, but it wasn't yeah. really a rebrand. And I don't think Facebook are actually rebranding the site, Facebook. No, they're not. I think yeah, they'll still same, have same. the site, yeah. Facebook is just, instead of Facebook owning WhatsApp and yeah. um, what else did they own? Um, uh, Instagram. Instagram yeah. They're just going to say Meta owns, you know, all three. Yeah. So Meta will become the parent company. Um, so with me, right, I think that an 08 moment is coming for big tech. Um, you know, like I think the West is quite reactionary when it comes to policy, right? Like it took a whole financial crisis to happen before proper regulations came into the uh, financial sector. So I think, um, unfortunately, a similar sort of disaster will have mm. to happen in the tech world. I don't know what it will be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many people die or we will be inflicted. Oh gosh, but yeah. But something really, really bad is going to happen in that space and in that world. And it's going to, you know, basically, the West are basically going to say, you know what, we need to start regulating this stuff because it's getting out of hand. Um, the scariest thing about what happened, what Facebook did and all the leaked documents is that um, everything they did wasn't illegal. Like they, they didn't actually break any laws, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was very unethical. But the scary thing is there are currently no regulations to stop Facebook from exploiting user data and making them feel insecure about themselves. I think mean, ultimately, you know, the government is eventually going to have to do something about that to protect consumers and um, users, especially young people as well, because it can be quite, yeah. can take quite a toll. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> meta, re virtual reality. Um, yeah, all of that virtual reality <laughs> stuff. I mean, I mean, do you know, I find it really interesting, like AR, VR, I find it yeah, really yeah, interesting, yeah, no, it but I think, I don't know how it's going to manifest itself. I think it's yeah. interesting to see what that's going to look like. Um, it's interesting that he did the whole demo thing, yeah. because... From my understanding, when I was looking into VR, like we're years away from getting anything that could actually be in the hand of consumers. Mm -hmm. It's actually good. Like there are some, you know, VR headsets and stuff. Yeah. But like from my reading, like we are quite a few years, like maybe 10, 15 years away from getting something where you can actually put on a headset and just be and walking just... around and um, and stuff. So yeah, I think long term, that is Facebook's strategy to mm -hmm. move maybe into VR and stuff. And I guess they are branding themselves well enough to be the first people that do that. So they probably have competitors like Google, Amazon mm -hmm. might be trying to do a similar thing. Um, but I think the one thing that is definitely problematic for Meta right now is that people don't trust them. Mm. Um, so if Google or Amazon, which 
in my opinion, are probably slightly more trusted than Facebook. We're offering the same product. People might opt to use those services. Yeah. Although Facebook is in the social media space, right? So they might link your meta account to your Instagram account, which might... Yeah. So <laughs> it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Um, but I wouldn't count anyone else out of the battle when it comes to this VR reality world. Yeah. Like Google could easily make their own. I can really see Google doing that. I think that's <clears> exactly. such a Google thing to do. Have you ever been to one of those VR places? I have. <laughs> I've never been. Have actually. you never been? Let me is tell it, you it really what it good? is. It's like, so you go in there, it's like a little cubicle. You yeah. go in there, step in there. And I remember I put on this headset, like so goggles, everything, you cover yourself. It's all pitch black in there. Oh, they wow. give you like nunchucks. You know, like the, the, the yeah, yeah, nunchucks. Yeah, give yeah. me those, two of those. And then all of a sudden, it goes from like, oh yeah, I can see outside to boom. You're in this virtual world. Everywhere you look around, I'm this character. You can't see yourself, obviously. You see your hands and you move around. It was very surreal. I mean, I did it for like an hour and 20 minutes, but I was very much immersed in there. When it shut down, I said, oh my gosh, like I'm back out. You get so into it. So I think I'd be yeah, so I crazy. Think, I would love to see, obviously we don't have like any long-term research on how this stuff will actually affect yeah, your brain and your mental exactly. health and stuff, but I'd love to see how it will because if you're in that metaverse every day, right? And a lot yeah. of young people will probably for be coming over from end. school going into the metaverse for like five, six hours, like how will that actually affect your relationships in real life? And <laughs> your... I don't even know. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's insane. Yeah, Absolutely it is insane. insane. But it's, it's interesting, I guess. So um, interesting. Yeah. But Toby, thank you so much for coming on this episode. This has been amazing. Um, <laughs> it's it's, it's been, been a pleasure. It's been a great episode to break the hiatus. So I'm really happy that you're here. Yeah, no, thank I'm you so to. much. Where can people find you if they want to come and find uh, you? So Instagram is tobes.dada. I also have an Instagram page called Toby Talks where I blog and I talk about um, interesting stuff. So yeah, check me out. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. We'll be back again next week. And I mean it. I, we're actually going to be back, back next week. Um, and yeah.